This is the most important skill when it comes to improving your life. It's the difference between living a mediocre life and an extraordinary life. In Hebrew, the concept is called cheshbon hanefesh, and it's literally translated to a counting of the soul. It's the skill of being real with yourself, radically real with yourself and honest where you are, what's going well, what's not going well, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what do you need to improve? Every single day working on yourself, being aware and bringing this awareness to every fabric of your being. According to some of our biggest Torah sages, the Gra and the Baal Shem Tov, they both agree that why were humans created primarily to fix our bad character traits. And how do you fix your bad character traits? Well, first of all, you have to know what they are. You have to do an accounting of the soul. You have to be aware, self-aware. Then you can embark on the journey of constant and never-ending improvement. You might think that some character traits don't have any place, such as sadness, but that's not true. The truth is, your character traits are neutral. I just lost a, a relative that was very close to me, and it's important that you grieve through that. What about anger? There's no place for that. Wrong. Sure, it's not good to lose your temper, but if there's an injustice in the world, and you see it happening on a daily basis, being angry is healthy. Wanting to solve that injustice and right the wrong in the world, that's a place for anger. Even the quality of arrogance, which in Hebrew is gaiva, has its place. You want to lower it to a very, very, very low level. And we call it having a, a lowly spirit in Hebrew. We want to have a lowly spirit humility in our lives. But you shouldn't go all the way down to a point where you don't believe in yourself. We need to have a healthy self-esteem, a healthy level of confidence in our own abilities, but not in this comparative world where we're better than other people. I want to share a small story about how I discovered my issues with arrogance. And this has to do with my taking accountability for myself. When I just started learning in Israel, I started learning this thing called Talmud. And I learn it every day now. But back then, I didn't connect with it. I would do anything to get out of learning this thing called Talmud. And then one day I met with my rabbi and I said, you know, I'm, not, I'm really not connecting. I don't think that any of this stuff is useful or fun to me. And he says in return, you got to work on your arrogance. I was shaken. I was a jarred. Excuse me, who are you to call me arrogant? In that meeting, I was very headstrong, ironically. When I left and I started to think about it, he was right. It wasn't the Talmud that didn't have life-changing information in it. It was me and my, my arrogance that was holding me back. And I remember like a couple months later, I was visiting my mom in Chicago. And my brother was over at the time. And then I got into a debacle with them. And then my brother said, how can you be so arrogant? And I started hearing this word left and right. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm not arrogant. And here I am sharing it with you. We all struggle with bad character traits or bad mitos. And our job in life is to do a tikkun, to fix these and get them to the right healthy and balanced middle. But it all starts with taking an accountability for your soul. If you don't take the time to reflect, go on a walk in a park, meditate, write down, journal, whatever habits you want to do to get yourself to this self-awareness, of what your bad character traits are, then you're never going to improve as much as you would if you did do this habit. And the same goes for your strengths. According to the Slobodka approach of Yeshiva Systems, which is where I went to in Israel, we do focus on your strengths first. It's important to focus and to know your strengths. In fact, it's important to know your strengths before you focus on your weaknesses. After all, your strengths, once you realize them, are going to be how you impact the world. It's what your true purpose is. For example, I know that I have good camera presence. That's why I'm making YouTube videos, because I know I have that skill. Not that I'm better than any other people, but I'm using that strength to help the world. This is also why I particularly don't like people who just say, I'm perfect and like when you're in therapy, they're validating that you were always right in the situation. It's not always true. Sometimes we do make mistakes. We're not perfect. And just because we're not perfect doesn't mean we're not supposed to change. We're supposed to grow. We're supposed to become better. If you're selfish and someone's validating you and saying, oh, it's okay to be selfish. You ever heard the saying? It's not selfish. It's self-care. Fine. There is a certain amount of taking care of yourself and putting the oxygen in your mask where you can use the airplane analogy. But some people take that metaphor too far and they live in that selfishness. They make that the, a part of them. That's not okay. And that's why we need to do a chesh bon nefesh. That's why we need to take an accountability of our soul so we can look ourselves in the mirror and say, you know what? That's not okay. I am too selfish. I need to work on that. And then committing to yourself for the rest of your life to make fractional improvements. I want to set a real tone here. It's one of the hardest things in the world to fully 
and permanently change one of your character traits. And I'm probably gonna be working on arrogance and selfishness for the rest of my life. But that self-awareness and that commitment to change is everything that matters. In the physical world, what matters is money, success, fame, external accomplishments and achievement. But in the spiritual world, it's about the effort you put in. You get rewarded based off of how much you push, how much you try. It's not about the outcome, it's about the process when it comes to spiritual growth. So even if you make only like a fractional change in your life, the fact that you tried means everything. So don't worry if you can't completely get rid of your bad character traits, but living a life where you commit to doing so will be the difference between a mediocre life and an extraordinary one. And with that, I bless you on your journey that you're able to do an accounting of your soul. You're able to become aware and know yourself to the limits of your abilities and to your strengths and your greatest strengths and realize and become aware of all those things and then commit to a life of perfecting yourself as much as possible. Sending my love from me to you and with that I'll see you in the next one.